Hey, what's going on guys? This is MB, the guy with the yellow hat. And today we're starting off a series called Tricks and Kicks. We're gonna be reviewing one of my most popular tricks where I get my trompo spinning on the toe box of my shoe. We're starting off the series with a classic Nike Air Force One sneaker that was customized by the homies off at Otaku Drip. Go check them out in the description below. Also, while this trick may seem easy, it is actually one of the hardest to master. We're gonna look at three things when rating the spinability of this shoe. One, we're gonna analyze the toe box. Two, quick test with a fixed tip and ball bearing trompo. And three, we are going to throw each trompo and break down our attempts of this trick. So let's begin with the toe box where all the magic happens. The toe box on this Nike is all this, right? Technically though, we can only use this area. Why? Because it's two angled here, two angled here, so we're forced to kind of use this area. This right here is six centimeters, and the distance here is nine centimeters. And while it might seem like we have a lot of surface, when you isolate that area, this is all you have to play with. And as you can see, it takes almost the whole space. So we gotta be precise and we have to have a lot of patience. The advantage of the Air Force Ones is that these two panels right here kind of create like a border because of the stitching that allows the trompo to spin and stop once it hits this edge. If the trompo is moving too fast, what's gonna happen is the trompo is actually going to exit that bound and it's gonna fall off, right? These holes also help the trompo stay in the toe box because the holes are big enough to have the tip actually nudge itself in there and have the trompo spin in place. Now let's talk about the two types of trompos that we can use for this trick. First one, we're gonna talk about the ball bearing trompo, which is comprised of two moving pieces, the trompo body and the trompo tip. If I hold the tip, you can see I can spin the body. If I hold the body, you can see I spin the tip. Now we have the fixed tip trompo, which is super different from the ball bearing because this trompo body and tip are actually stuck together, meaning it has to spin together and nothing moves independently. So now let's do a little test to see if the trompo will actually just stay on the shoe if we get it on. As you can see, it's spinning on the hole and it's stuck and it's jiggling a lot. Now I'm gonna test it somewhere else in the shoe. As you can see, it got stuck on the border like this. So we know that the trompo will stay on the shoe. Now we're gonna test it with the ball bearing trompo, so I'm gonna place it on it like this. As you can see, it got stuck on the hole. Now I'm gonna place it in another part of the shoe just to see how it performs. As you can see, it got stuck on the edge. And finally, we are going to throw these trompos individually to examine and break down the complexities of this trick on the shoe. Let's start with a ball bearing trompo. Right off the bat, we have this one that's going in a little too fast and it falls off the toe box. This one right here falls off from way too high of a distance. Some of the impact gets absorbed but still manages to get off. This landing looks like it's smooth enough to stay on the lip, but in the end, it falls off. This last one absorbs some of the impact. It slides to the edge, stays on the edge, and it stays on the toe box. Now let's try it with the fixed tip trompo. This landing is coming in a little too wobbly and it manages to fall down. This one right here hits the lip and it starts grinding the edge. It's kind of cool, but in the end, unfortunately, it does fall down. This one hits the top part of the shoe. It lands on one of those holes that I told you guys earlier and still manages to get off, ride the lip and fall down. This one came in a little too hot. This last one right here looks like it's coming in too fast, but manages to absorb some of that initial impact and stays on the toe box. And that is that. All in all, I give this shoe a spinability rating of eight out of 10, meaning it is relatively easy to get your trompo to spin on the toe box of the shoe. Don't let this rating trick you though. This is still a hard trick to master. And try it yourself. I wanna know, is it easy or hard to get the trompo to spin on your shoe? And that concludes the first episode of Tricks and Kicks. For the next episode, I'm gonna be reviewing another classic, so stick around, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more updates, and I'm gonna catch you guys later.